All right, my friends, I want to look at first visit and then visit arrival again. And I want to look at it from a different angle. You guys have heard me talk about this after the uh, arrival, first visit arrival research that came out. You guys have heard me talk about it a lot because it's part of my uh, big three, arrive, pay, and stay. You can't have pay and stay without arrive. You can't have stay. You can't move from first visit arrive to pay. And then you can't have stay without arrive. It's that simple. So I want to look at, we've looked at arrive from the um, research side of why patients don't arrive, right? And what that research tells us and what it doesn't tell us. And it does, it tells us the work to be done. It tells us that research tells us what we need to do next, which is go cool. I know who's not arriving, right? So I, I want to say this because I'm I know so many people looked at that research and went, yeah, I knew that, right? Because it said the obvious thing. So yeah, I know those people don't arrive, right? They've always been a problem at my clinic. They're a problem everywhere. And I'm like, hmm, you're part of the problem then. If you looked at that research and just says, yeah, prove what I already knew. We can't help those people. I'd go wrong. Showed you who's not arriving. It didn't tell you why. Didn't tell you why. You must start questioning why people aren't arriving. And I'm going to tell you flat out the reason people don't know the people, the reason the number one people aren't arriving, the number one I've secret called. I've done more secret callers than anybody else who's watching this. There may be other groups who've done it, but I've yet to find them. So I'm, I'm, I make broad sweeping statements until I find other people doing secret callers. Nobody else is doing secret callers. Nobody, nobody, zero, zero people gave me a reason to arrive. And if you want to know why should they arrive, that's not this Facebook. That's not this video. Uh, I'm going to have a podcast coming out real soon that deals with that. I've spoken about this in past uh, videos. If you want, go to my YouTube page and look at like arrival or why should people arrive? And I'll answer that question for you. And nobody ever can answer that question. I guarantee you that study. I want to get a hold of the front desk recordings from that study. I've already reached out to the authors. I got an idea. I said, let's figure out if we can change this. So we've looked at arrival from that side, right? And we know arrival, arrive, pay, and stay is what? Patient success. You can't have patient success if they don't arrive. You can't have patient success if they don't know what the cost is. Um, and by the way, regardless of insurance or out of network or in network or no charge or bartering for chickens. It doesn't matter. They must know their cost. And then lastly, you can't have patient success if they don't complete a plan of care and their plan of care can be one visit. Their plan of care can be 25 visits, whatever it is, they have to arrive. Okay. So we come at it from the patient success side. And you all know that in order to have business success, you must have patient success. In order to get patient success and business success, our patients must arrive, pay and stay. So we, we, we've come at it from the first phone call, dude, I can't repeat it enough. And I got to tell you guys, the reason for this topic is the work I'm doing currently, the phone calls I'm listening to currently, the stress, the stress on arrival, meaning the emphasis put on arrival is missing from everywhere. The, the, the emphasis is put on scheduling, get people scheduled. I'm like getting people scheduled is just a step in a process. Everybody treats scheduled like the fucking goal, like the outcome. Cool, they're scheduled, high five. Again, I've asked this once, I'll ask it a million times. How many scheduled people have paid your bills? How many scheduled people have grown your company? Zero. Arrivals pay your bills. Arrivals grow your company. Arrivals allow you to do the good you do in your community so that more people will come and arrive. I'll beat that dead horse, okay? <clears throat> so again, we look at it from the side of the research and first visit arrival. And yes, you know, in order for success, right? They got to arrive for the first visit, then they got to arrive for their follow-ups. Cool. Let me talk about it from this side now. The value, where you can draw the most value from, from a financial side from your business. So let's take a step back. 
you get rolling, you understand it's who you serve, what you serve them with, their life cycle in your company. So you can create the experience you want to create, right? You build the systems out for the experience. We do all this work we're talking about here. We connect phase one with phase two, with phase three, with phase four. We understand the phases. We understand the objectives. We understand the goals. We understand how when the team members come together, right? It is most likely the highest probability we will have of having patient success. Rinse, repeat right? We understand all that. So you get to that, right? And you understand that it's about arrive, pay and stay. So then I say, cool. Now let's break down your finances. Now let's look at the value of the company. Now let's look at where you're going to spend your money. Because 99% of you are going to tell me you need more new patients or you need to spend your money on more marketing. And I'll go slowly roll. Maybe that's true, but you're going to have to prove it to me. So I'm then going to ask you what's your first visit arrival rate, what's your cancel rate, what's your no-show rate, the three things that are what? The opposite of arrival. I say arrival rate, meaning because I want to know, right, is it above 90%? Because if it's not, right, that means that 10% of the people are not arriving. So I say arrival rate, but it tells us who, you know, the percentage that aren't arriving. So we start to look at those numbers. If your mark, uh, if your drop off rate is greater than I'd say 10% is the roof roof. And by drop off, I mean, self discharges, self cancels, right? Disappear, make a phone call, walk out, say, I'll call you back, uh, walk out saying, I'll, I'll schedule next time call you back and say, I need to schedule or I need to cancel all my appointments. I'll call you some other time or just stop showing up, right? Those are drop-offs. If that is above 10%, you don't need more new patients. If your cancel rate is above, I'll give you 8%, and that means empty slots. If your cancel rate is above 8%, you don't need more new patients. So when you tell me you need more new patients, if you can't tell me you drop off and cancel rate, that means empty slots. If you can't tell me your no-show rate, there's a third one, then I'm not going to agree that you need more marketing. If your no-show rate is above about 2%, 1% to 2%, I'm going to tell you, you don't need more marketing. Here's the issue I have. <clears throat> I've run into a couple clinics recently. Combined no-show, cancel rate, empty slots. Empty slots, empty slots is 30% of all scheduled appointments. I'm like, for every 100 people on the schedule, we have 30 empty slots. I'm like, and what they do, think about this for a second. So I want you to get the visual on this when you're thinking about business metrics and metrics to run your business, metrics for business success. I want you to think about this. So work with me here. A full schedule is not an indication of success. A full schedule is an indicator of a busy week, people coming in. Yet here's the thing, and I shared this recently. I've got a clinic owner who has a completely booked out schedule right? The whole clinic's booked out. Bills are getting paid. Things are happening. He's got a 30% no-show cancel rate. That means 30% of those people that were on the schedule move off, which open slots for other people to move into. But that means 30% of the potential business is saying, I don't want to do business with you. Let's do some, let's do some simple math here. I like simple math. 30% let's say that's 30 bucks. I mean, I'm sorry, a hundred dollars a visit, right? And that's a hundred visits, right? And 30% of that is 30. That means they're leaving $3,000 a month in the trash. And right. The typical approach is, well, we make it up with new patients. I'm like, uh, someone hands you $3,000 and you throw it in the trash and go look for another $3,000. That is the most inefficient way to do business is cram the top of the funnel, more new patients. So again, remember, we're talking from a business efficiency, from a value here, value proposition. Let me tell you where this is coming from again. And remember, we're talking 30%, right? 30 visits at $100, that's $3,000 a month. That's $36,000 a year. What could you do with $36,000 in your business? So again, it is a place, it is a position to look at of lost value lost revenue, lost potential, lost growth. Cool. We're busy. 
we're cruising along, but you're not busy enough to hire another provider. Now we go up a little bit, then we trim back down. And I'm like, well, geez, even if you filled 20, you know, 80% of those slots, 20 visits, so even less, 70% of those slots. Now you start to see the opportunity and keep them busy and run around 10%, cancel, no show, right, right, whatever. Now you see the opportunity to hire more staff and to what? Grow your company. But for right now, filling up the schedule and letting 30% drop off is status quo. There's no growth there. And you keep talking about um, thinking of hiring, but we just don't get busy enough. And I'm like, you got more people dropping off than a new person could accommodate, right? You have 30 visits a month that the new hire could start seeing if they were staying. Let me tell you where this is coming from. I've started to do work on the other side of the equation. So I've helped some clinics. I've had clinics reach out in the past, right? Hey, we're looking for a buyer, blah, blah, blah. And we want to bring more value in. Say, look, the easiest thing is your no-show cancel rate. Think about this. When someone shows up to buy your clinic, all they're going to look at is top line and bottom line. So if you do the work necessary to get back half let, 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 let's just say it's two. No, we'll stick with $3,000. If you do the work to get back $3,000 a month at $36,000 a year, that drives up the multiplier. That drives up the value of your business with no new services, with no new hires, with no new products, with no new nothing other than you're making sure you're managing the people who come in at the top of the funnel. Again, hear me out on this because I'm starting to work. I just had a phone call yesterday and we're talking about value in these clinics and what they look for. And I'm telling these people, I can help you add value to these clinics you buy because I can come in after you buy them with you and we'll just change the drop-off, no-show rate. The drop-off, no-show, cancel rate. I'm like, you'll up the margin in two, four months max. That's how I'm pitching myself. I'm pitching myself on making them more efficient in the inefficiency that you guys have created. Think about that. It was a very easy and simple conversation. <clears throat> he got it. He's not a healthcare guy. He's a money guy. I say, look, I got a strategy. Starts on the first phone call. Brings people through, right? Same thing I pitched you guys. Just telling you, I pitched him exactly the same way. And we got to the end of it and he goes, oh, we got to do some work together. Everybody on the other side is going, oh no, I don't have a problem. I just need more new patients. And I'm telling him, buy that clinic at their current value right? I'm giving you a heads up here. He's going to step in and buy that clinic with all the drop-offs, all the no-shows and everything at a lesser value. I'm telling you, if you do the work now, you create the value, you get paid more. He comes in, pays you at the lesser value. He pays me to come in on the other side and increase the value in two to four months that, yeah, I could have helped you increase in two to four months. That is the other side of this arrival rate, my friends. Still patient success. Right, But now I'm looking at it from bringing more value to you in your clinic and how you have to look at the systems and the ecosystem that is your practice. So if you have any intention of adding value to the clinic, if you have any intention of selling it, if you have any intention of bringing on investors, by the way, people all the time, oh, I want to bring a partner on. They want part of the business. What do I do? I'm like, this is the work to be done. And the greater value, think about this. I tell this all the time. And it's not about, it's not about cheating anybody. The greater value you have when you bring a partner in, right? If you bring a partner in at a lower value, you're going to have to pay them as you grow. If you're here already, you're still going to pay them out, but from the higher value, you've already created that. And you've been running at this difference for however long you fix that problem. Hope this is making sense to everybody. This, this is huge. This is huge. This group group I'm talking with, right? They plan on buying more clinics. They plan on doing this with everybody. These are the guys with the money. And I had a real simple, straightforward conversation with them. And we're already talking about doing some work together because they see the value in creating that efficiency. Why cram more people into the top of the funnel when you already have people in the system that are churning out? Why not patch the funnel? So again, right? If I drop your no-show rate in half, shared this story recently with someone I've done this with, dropped their no-show rate in half and they have 10,000, no, they actually have 13 more thousand dollars of revenue each month. That's over 200 or is it, is it two? Yeah, close to, I'm just going to make a number up. 
somewhere between $150,000, $200,000 more a year. When someone shows up to buy their company, they will be paid on that extra $200,000. And we just did exactly what I told you guys. We increased all the pre-arrival and then some pre and then arrival work. So when someone walks in to value your company, there's an extra $200,000 a year on that. You get paid for that. If you're still running at a 50% cancel rate and they come in and value you, you don't get paid on that. Not only that, I show up and show them how to do it. And four months later, they're putting another $12,000 on the top line. And they're pulling that value out of your company that you left behind. This is really, really important for you to understand as you want to create value in your company and you must stop these leaks and telling people, I just need more patience or yeah, we got a huge top of the funnel, right? That works. You'll get paid for that, but you're bleeding money out through your no-shows, through your cancels, through your drop-offs. That will impact you and your ability to extract more money out of the business. How do I know that? Talk to them, ask them. How do you value these companies, right? Right. When I go to them, I saw that opportunity as soon as we uh, hung up the phone the first time. I went to them and said, look, I can bring you guys more value. How? It took me two minutes to describe. I'll come in after you guys come in. We'll increase that front end efficiency. We'll decrease the drop-offs, the cancels, and the no-shows. And your margin will go up in two to four months. Huh? That's patient success, my friends. By the way, we're not adding visits. We're not optimizing billing. We're not adding fucking units. We're taking care of the fucking people that are coming in the business. That's the beauty of all this. I get to sleep well at night helping the finance guys grow a network of clinics by helping them do what? Create more patient success. The success in the, by creating the efficiencies that the last owners are leaving out. And let me tell you, the clinics they're getting right now, huge, huge cancels, huge drop-offs. So I will be very successful with them on this first run. And my hope is through this, that you will have a better conversation when the time comes to share your books, open your books and share your finances, financials with someone who's looking to purchase your clinic. I'm going to tell you right now, this is the easiest, most simplest way to create more value in your business. No new marketing spin, no, no more top of the funnel. Remember how we started this? I need more new patients, right? And you can't sell referral sources. You can't sell any of that. What's making you the money is the efficiency of managing people through that life cycle. I can help you do that. I can help you put that stuff in place four months, just like I will for them. And you have it in place and it repeats itself. Remember, this isn't four months and it stops. This is repeating. So if you get more efficient, the 12,000 turns into 13,000, turns into 14,000, turns into 15,000 a month. Then someone shows up a year later and again, you get paid out for the work you did to just drive more efficiency in your business. Take care of the people that are already calling, taking care of the people that are at least arriving for the first visit. How do we do that? All right, we set up the rules of engagement for your company. First phone call through agreed upon plan of care and then through the visits. All this other BS about value and driving value and adding money to the bottom line. This is everybody overcomplicates the whole equation. I'm a simple math guy. That's why it's like, again, I did the math for you guys. If 30 visits at $100 is $3,000. And again, let's just say we recoup $2,000 of that amount, $24,000 of value that you will be paid on you will get paid because that will figure into the multiplier. You will get paid for that work. I'm telling you right now, my friends, because my other friends, right? They're hoping you're not doing the work. And I don't say that rudely or facetiously, but they're looking for how can we pull more value out of this company, right? When they're looking at you, they're looking at your financials and your systems because they're looking at how can they make these systems and this process more efficient. And you go, look, Here's our financials. By the way, here's our system. We got this thing dialed in. That's why we're more valuable to you. You guys aren't going to have to work to create more efficiencies. Take it over, get another 5% out of it, right? We're running at max efficiency. That's why you want us and you will get paid for that work you did. And by the way, I'm happy to help you get there. Four months. I'm either going to do it for them. I will. Anyway, because you guys realize if you do it, there's 10 other people who won't. 
So I'll end up doing the work for them and getting paid by them. I'd much prefer to build it in for you on the front end, because that means you're serving more people in your community. That means you're running more efficiently. That means you have a happy team. That means you create happy patients. That means all these good things are happening and I'd rather create it for you. But in the meantime, there's no reason for me not to be talking to these guys going, I'll do it for you too. Because I know there's a lot of inefficient practices out there that are cramming the top of the funnel and then letting people churn out. I'm like, I'll patch those holes. That's what we'll do. All right, cool. That's it. So this was a discussion about arrival rate. When people don't arrive, you have cancels, you have drop-offs, you have no-shows. All starts at first visit arrival, right? We all know the ecosystem starts up. It's still about the front desk because the front desk, I've proven this over and over, the front desk has huge control over this and makes it more efficient. You're like, well, my team manages it when people show up. I'm like, cool, but you're burning up fuckload of money and a fuckload of time and a fuckload of energy to get that result. And if we moved it upstream, we could get more result for less energy, less money, less time. I'm happy to do that for you. Comment down below, reach out to me, do whatever you want. Um, I'm here and uh, we can have a conversation about how I can do this for you. And otherwise, if you want to do it yourself, more power to you, do it do it. Go to my YouTube page, start pulling up some of that other stuff, start listening, start implementing. If you want to get it done in four months or less, everybody I work with gets start. I, I like this four month window because everybody gets results, starts getting results before the four months is up. I want everybody to make their money back before I'm finished, right? And how they make it back, more people who arrive, pay and stay. That's it, my friends. All right. Stay in touch. I'll be here next week. This was fun. I enjoyed arrival, right? That we've talked about in the past from up here in this view of the front end and everything and looking at arrival and how it is your biggest values suck in your company. All right. Cheers all.